Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about what everybody hates to do in Crusader Kings 3 and that is to grant away your titles. I have been thinking about making a video about this and I have come up with four rules or guidelines that you should keep in mind when granting away your titles. And if you try to follow these four rules, your game should be going a little bit more smoothly. So without further ado, here are my four rules for granting away land in Crusader Kings 3. First, you're going to want to make sure you don't give away your land to anybody who is the same realm tier as you. If you do this, the person will become an independent realm and you'll get no benefits from that land you worked super hard to get. The second thing you're going to want to make sure to do to pay attention to the opinion that the people you're trying to give the land away to have of your player. It is important not only to pay attention to their opinion of you right now, but to also pay attention to what their opinion might be of you in the future. So that means taking a look at what their religion is and their culture. The third thing you should do is make sure that you give your land away to people with high stewardship. With high stewardship, the people will earn more money for themselves and therefore they will pay you more money in taxes. And the last thing that you should try to do when giving away your land is to keep your vassals divided along duchy lines in your kingdom. This will help a lot with stopping vassal wars, but I will discuss this and the other three tips in this video. So let's just get started. So the first thing we need to talk about in this video is why do we have to give away land. I know what you're thinking. I just worked hard in this game to declare war on these two guys and to capture these two counties. How come I have to give them away now? Well, it's because of this thing up here in the corner, which is your domain limit. And what this tells you is how many domains you can hold before you get a penalty. And this is because your player has a certain level of stewardship, which is kind of like how good your player is at managing your realm, how good they are with gold. So this determines how many lands you can control on yourself because controlling a land, right? It takes a certain amount of focus. So in this game, you can only control a certain amount depending on your stewardship, but it also depends on other things like which technologies you have as an example. So you can see here ledger and generally this tech always throughout the um, eras will always increase your domain limit by one but also if you're a duke you get an extra domain limit and if you're a king you get an extra domain limit but that that's neither here nor there what you do need to know is that when you are above your domain limit, you get a negative penalty to the levies and taxes in all your lands not just the lands that you just took and you also get a negative opinion buff with all of your vassals so right now since i just started this game i actually don't have any vassals yet but what is affecting me is actually this minus 40% that I'm getting to both my men and my gold income right now. Quite a lot. And that's just for being two domains over my limit. If I was three, it would be 60%. You can see here when I hover over my capital, the tax is getting um, reduced by 40% for being over domain limit. So I know that it sucks to give away your land, but let's look at these pieces of land and see how much they're really worth to me if I own them directly. So right now, this tribal hold is only making 0.2 um, gold per turn, and it's getting a 10% bo bonus to that because of my uh, stewardship. So the max gold that this could be making is around, around 0.22 gold. But holding this land puts me one over my domain limit, which is giving me a minus 20 debuff on all of my taxes in my land. If we look at my total income from my domain, without the 40% debuff that I'm getting right now, I would be making around 1.5 gold per month. And currently I'm only making 0.9. Having this current piece of land under my control is actually losing me 0.3 gold per month. So that means if I was to give it away to somebody, I would be gaining around 0.1 gold per month. And that's for giving the land away. So it really doesn't pay to keep these extra lands that you just got if they're causing you a huge gold um, penalty, pretty much. So another important point about giving land away is after you give your land away to somebody, let's say if I was to just choose this guy here, 
he now becomes my vassal. And what that means is that he's going to start paying me money depending on his income. So if I look at my vassal screen, you can see this guy will be paying me 8% of his total income. Right now, because this county has low control, it's not making that much money, so he's not paying me that much. But as the control increases, he will start giving me money. Now the income's not a lot. It's still helpful because it's not like when you give your land away, it's suddenly making you zero dollars. You're going to get certain money from your vassals. So the first thing that you're going to want to watch out doing when you're trying to give your land away in Crusader Kings 3 is you're not going to want to give away your land if it is the same level as you. So what this means is you can see right now I am a um, duchy tier realm which means the highest title that I hold is a duchy and that means that I cannot give away any of the other duchies that I own because let's say if I were to grant away this new duchy I just got you can see that you can see what would happen is this guy who I would grant it to would become an independent kingdom which means he will no longer be part of my realm and he'll have his own realm so just as, as an example I'm gonna grant this, this to this guy here and you can now see that he is his own land here. He owns this whole place and I don't. I know in the beginning of the game I had done this a few times and I'm sure you have too and it's super annoying because you you lose the land that you just got and what's worse is you don't even get a claim on the land so it's hard for you to take it back after. So be sure whenever you're playing to check your, your tier ranking and never give away any titles that are the same rank as you because it will create a new realm when you do that. So another important thing about giving your land away is you're going to want their opinion to be high with you right now, but you're going to want to make sure that it stays high for the remainder of your character's life and even when they go into the next life, which means that you're going to want to make sure they're going to be the same religion as you, as your family. And it helps also if they are the same culture as you. So you should take a look at their religion, their culture, their opinion of you, and even their traits to see if they're going to be reasons where they might hate you in the future. So when I do go to grant to somebody, I like to choose somebody who has high stewardship because they'll make more money, meaning I'll make more money from the taxes that they have to pay me. And I also try to always choose somebody with the same religion as me because if they are a different religion than you, they'll get a negative opinion buff to you. And that's not good because it'll make them more likely to join rebellions and things like that. So I'm going to grant that title away. And now you'll what you can notice is actually before I granted these two titles away, I was only making 0.9 gold per month and now I'm making 1.5 gold per month, which is directly because I'm not getting the negative 40% um, attribute to all of my gold and my men. And you can see also my units increase because the same thing happens to them. So it really doesn't pay to keep lands um, if they're above your domain limit. So another thing that you're going to want to be aware of when you're giving your land away is actually what duchy the lands are a part of. So you can see here, I already have two vassals in these titles here, and I have two lands I want to give away from these top two in these top two titles here. So if I take a look at the duchy map, I can see these are part of one duchy. This guy's land is part of my home duchy and this person's land is part of this duchy here. So the problem with giving um, land to vassals across different duchies is that eventually when they get a hold of the duchy for themselves, either through warfare or through you creating it and giving it to them, they'll want to hold the whole duchy for themselves. So that can create a lot of infighting between the vassals of your realm. So what I always try to do is um, try to keep my vassals separated in terms of duchies. So that means that since this, these two lands are part of this duchy, I'm going to go ahead and grant these both to a different ruler. And eventually when I'm able to create this duchy, I will give it to him. And I find this generally helps because a lot of people will try to give separate their vassals in terms of one piece of land each or one or two only but i find it's actually really helpful to have strong vassals who have multiple pieces of land and duchies and they're actually able to invade other people for you and that's how you can get 
um, a lot of land really quickly because you won't even the only work that you'll have to do is taking out the bigger enemies and your vassals will take out all of the smaller enemies around them but this strategy is a little bit risky because you'll have to make sure that your vassals will like you enough not to turn on you when they become strong and for that same reasoning since I took this um, county here which is part of this duchy I'm just gonna go ahead and grant that to another new vassal okay so this has kind of been the game that I was playing through this whole video and I just am able to found my kingdom here so I'm gonna go ahead and do that so now we own the kingdom of greater Poland and I just wanted to go ahead and show you guys if you follow these four tips of granting your land to vassals uh, your game should run pretty smoothly you can see I can have my army should replenish to 4,000 troops which is a lot more than all my neighbors right now so I should be in a good position just to steamroll over all of these guys around me I'm making a lot of gold from both my vassals and my taxes so now you can actually see that all my vassals really like me because I've kind of done these steps of trying to keep their opinion high and uh, most of these vassals, by the way, I granted them when I was this guy's father. I wasn't even this player yet. So it shows that I tried to pay attention to what these guys would think of me in the future. That's an important step to, uh, to consider. So if you follow these four steps and you grant your land away like that, you shouldn't have any more problems. Or you shouldn't have as many problems, at least, with revolts and um, rabbles. You can see I don't have any factions that are targeting me right now. So it just, it leads to smoother gameplay and hopefully it'll make the game a lot easier for you guys. You can also see I have some strong vassals here, such as this guy, and he's actually winning a war against these guys here. So he's already gaining me land. He's gaining land for me, like I mentioned previously in the video. So if you do follow these four steps, your game should run a little bit more smoothly. So that's pretty much it for the video today. If you guys did enjoy or learn something, Drop a Mitsubishi Ki-15 Bomber on that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next video.